Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Jeremiah with part two of What Happened at Yeshua's Death? And we're going to get into some scriptures, but first I want to say all praises to the Most High Yahweh, the name of Yahusha. And also, brothers and sisters, trust the Holy Spirit that the Most High has sent unto you to lead and guide you into all truth. Trust no man, test every spirit, see if it is from Yah. By re reading the word, which washes you clean. And by reading the word, you're reading life. And by reading life, you're building the kingdom of the Most High. One man and woman at a time. And it's my goal to influence you to pick up the word yourself and build your own personal relationship with the Most High and the Son. That you may find a bond and come before Him on bending knee and humbled and meek and subservient. And ask Him questions and let Him lead you to the answers. And continue to have trust and faith in Him throughout things you do not understand yet. I'm going to read from Romans chapter 5 through Romans chapter 10 so we can get an understanding of what Paul was saying. If you haven't watched part 1, please go stop. Put this in your watch later file or press pause, open up another YouTube channel, uh, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to put the uh, link in the description box, or I'll try to put it on the channel, where you can just click on it right now, and watch it first. And then I'm going to put a link in that video to the first video to the second video as well. So when you're done with it, you can click and go to this video instantly to kind of cap it off. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to have to make a part three. Depends on how long <clears throat> this one here is going to be. But this is for your edification and this is don't make it a time thing. If you don't have any patience, then. You got to pray for it. Pray for the patience and the time and get an understanding. But watch part one for sure. It goes hand in hand with this part two. To get a good understanding of what I was talking about in part one. And what happened at the death of Yahusha. So Romans chapter five, start in verse one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Yahweh through our master, Yahusha Hamashiach, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of Yahweh. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of Yahweh is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Yahusha died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a God for a good man some would even dare to die. But Yahweh commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yahshua died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. 
Now we are saved from that wrath by the covering of their blood that the death angel may pass over. Just like in Exodus where we killed the lambs, the lamb, and uh, put the blood over our doorposts that the death angel may pass over. That was a foreshadow of what Yahushua was going to do for the nation of Yahshua, the twelve tribes, the chosen of the Most High. Now, when this was done, it wasn't told to the Egyptians to put the blood over their doorposts that their children might be spared and saved, that the death angel may pass over. It was told to Yahshua. And maybe some of them heard some of these other Gentiles who came out with us. Maybe they heard and they took heed to that. And maybe they did the same. And some of their children were spared. We don't know, but we know that they came out with us when we came out of the house of bondage, Mizraim, Egypt. Okay, verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to Yahuwah by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in Yahuwah, through our master, Yahushua Mashiach, by whom we have now received the atonement. So, what nation of people is awakening and doing the Day of Atonement? That's the 12 tribes. Because the other nations don't believe in the feast days. They don't believe in what huh, the order of the way Yah Yahushua is going to save us. These are our enemies, Zion. Even though they pick up the book, read from the book, preach the book, they do not do the things that are written in the book. They do some, some, but it's still of their own choosing. That's the difference between us. We are obedient to our Father and do what He chooses for us. Verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered in into the world and death by sin now remember I said there was the law of sin and death there's a law of life and righteousness look right here death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned all of us for until the law sin was in the world you see, sin was in the world even before the law went forth. Look at this. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. They still was dying because judgment was passed. Death. So Adam had to die the death. So did everyone else. Verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, one many be dead, much more the grace of Yahweh and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahshua Meshach, have abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemn one to condemnation but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which 
receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Yahshua Mashiach. So Yahusha is the key to being freed from the law of sin and death. Not being free from the law of righteousness, life, and love. Verse 18, therefore as by the, did I just read that one? I'll read it again if I did. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men con to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one that of one the free gift came upon all men up unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. You're still a sinner. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now by one you are made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahshua Mashiach, our Master. What shall we say then? I mean, wait a minute. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yahweh forbid. That means no. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yahshua Mashiach, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Yahshua was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And what is life? It was given to us in Deuteronomy, it was given to us on Mount Sinai. Life and death was given to us there. Yashara. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. See, in the first Adam, we die the death because of sin. In the second Adam, we live in the resurrection to life. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, the first Adam destroyed in you, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. You are free from sin, the law of sin and death. 8. Now if we be dead with Christ, Yahshua, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Yahshua being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death have no more dominion over him, neither us. Verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto Yahweh. That means he liveth after the ways of Yahweh. 11. Romans chapter 6 verse 11. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. You're dead to sin, but alive unto Yahweh through Yahshua Mashiach, our master. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Now, I'm going to pause right here for a second. If you don't know what sin is, how are you going to avoid it? How are you going to... Stop 
committing sin if you don't understand what it is. That's why we still have the Bible. So that you can read it with the Holy Spirit's guidance to understand what is the ways of the laws of righteousness and life. What is the laws of life? But you also got to understand what's sin, the laws of sin and death and the judgments thereof. That you can use the examples that are everywhere around you and in this book to avoid sinning against the Father. Because it is this word that washes you clean, that makes you a new man. It's the most high put you on that potter's clay and clay, remold you, reshape you. You got to trust in his holy ways. You have to let him put you on a pot. Don't put yourself up there. Don't throw yourself up there in your own righteousness, your own thoughts as a lot of these camps are doing and organizations. Let the Most High wash you clean and bring you into this truth. Verse 12, let not sin differ reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. That's why you got to fight against to keep that mortal man dead in the grave. He will try to revive itself all the time. And it is a fight in the battle, but it will get easier. You may trip and stumble off you, but continue to pick yourself up. Repent. Confess your sins and get up and try again. And do not let your sins weigh you down heavy while you're on this walk, because sin will take advantage of that. And, and next you know, you'll be opening new doors and he's sending in more evil spirits into you. And it's going to be that much harder for you to turn away from that which you're working on right now. As I have experienced, even right now. Verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto Yahweh as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Yahweh. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Now right here, does this mean the law of righteousness is gone? The law of love is done away with? Or is it talking about the law of sin and death? Let's read on. What then? Shall we, shall we sin because we are not under the law? But under grace, Yahweh forbid, know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. But Yahweh be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart, from the mind, that form of doctrine, teachings, which was delivered you. Now, how are you going to get the teachings if you don't open this book and read and get the form of righteousness delivered to your brain, to your mind, to your heart, so that you can learn righteousness. You can learn love and, and holiness and walk in it. Verse 18, being then made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness, unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, under sin, under the bondage of sin, you were free from Righteousness can serve two masters here. What fruit have what fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants of Yahweh, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yeshua Mashiach, our Master. Know ye not, brethren, 
for I speak to them that know the law. How that the law have dominion over man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath in the husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be, husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that, from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Yahshua Mashiach, that you should be married to another what is this marrying to another? You are married to Yahweh, Yahusha, and you're living in the righteousness and the love of his laws, of holiness. And you're dead to the laws of sin and death. Even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit of Yahweh unto Yahweh. You see, when you serve up these fruits of the Spirit, you are giving offerings to the Most High in the Spirit. When you're doing the righteous things of mentioned throughout the Holy Word of the Most High, you're bringing good fruit unto Yahweh through obedience and applying his teachings in your life. That's why Hamashiach read on the Sabbath day in the books of the Torah and the prophets, the laws and the prophets, to teach the nation of Yahshua to walk in holiness and righteousness and turn from unrighteousness and unholiness which has its own set of laws that you see is going out into the world verse 5 for when we were in the flesh the motions of sins or desires of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death now some of these fruits of of um, sin and death is mentioned in Second Timothy here. Let me mention some of these fruits. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. These are the fruits of sin and death. These are the laws of sin and death. Lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. I don't think I said that right. Blasphemers. <laughs> Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, truce breakers. You know, you make a truce with someone like the Europeans did with the natives. They made truces, made these treaties, and they broke them. That's truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of Yahweh, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And this is the reason why they can't come to the knowledge of the truth because they're living the laws of sin and death out. And in Galatians, it also talks about some of those fruits. Uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, we read, Now the works... Of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, 
fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. In the same, you have the fruits of the Spirit spoken of. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, if you are automatically doing these things, there is no law against, against you. You are living in the fruits of the Spirit. There is no law of sin and death. There is no judgment that can come to you if you are living and you have that faith of Yahshua Mashiach. There is no law. It's nothing that can touch you. But let's go back to Romans chapter 7 verse 6. Or let me read verse 5 again. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, desires of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So this is talking about a different law here. Can't y'all see this? Which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit of death. But you got a different law that brings forth fruits of life. These are the two things that were not and cannot be explained throughout the whole of Christianity, Catholicism, and the Muslim faith, who he picks up our book and reads them and uses them for their unjust means. It's going to take us who are waking up to fulfill bringing the true gospel to the world. And that, what I'm speaking right now is the true gospel. That's what's supposed to go out into the world. But these other people calling themselves us, wanting to be the holy and the righteous, wanting to be the chosen, brought another gospel and another Hamashiach to the world, to deceive the world, into believing that their God was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I'm, I'm bringing forth what was brought to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In which Hamashiach told us to bring to the world. The understanding of what happened at Yahshua's death. Verse 6, but now we are delivered from the law. That being dead, wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Yahweh forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, brought in me all manner of con concupiscence I'm going to learn how to say that right one day kind of said it right for without the law concupiscence for without <laughs> for without the law sin was dead <clears throat> for I was alive without the law once but when the commandment came sin revived and I died and the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death, for sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Is Paul kind of confusing you there? You got to remember what he's talking about, two separate laws here. This would clear the confusion as you're reading. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Yahweh forbid. But sin that but sin that it might appear sin 
work of death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold unto sin. For that which I do I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. You see the war that's going on within his flesh, the war between the sin and death, and the law of life and righteousness? This is the war that's raging within each and every one of us. And you have to die to the law of sin and death. You have to die to the judgments. Well, you know, the judgment's going to stand, but you have to die to the, the law of sin and death. That Yahusha may cover you in the spirit of life and righteousness, that the death angel may pass over you, and that you may live. Verse 16, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. You see, you got to know the scriptures to understand Paul's writings. You got to know, you got to go back through Genesis, through Malachi, even through the Apocrypha and study really well. Study Enoch, the book of Enoch, the book of Joshua, the book of Jubilees really well. Then come back and read the New Testament after you studied those first books and got a very good understanding, then you will see Yahshua's walk and his death and his and what had took place after his death. Then you will see Paul coming in the scene trying to explain to his people the truth. Verse 17, Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. <laughs> For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. There's the war that's raging in our flesh. Verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. But I see another law in my members. There's the separation. There's the two I was talking about. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Now do you understand what's in your members, the lo that what's in the flesh, those fruits of the Spirit that, was, that I read? It's in your flesh, it's in your members. It is worn against the, the Spirit, your Spirit, which, is, which was made new through the baptism. Oh, wretched man that I am. Let me go back up to 22. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. But I see another law in my members worn against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank Yahweh through Yahusha Meshach our master. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Remember, when you serve your flesh, you're entering into the law of sin and death, which is supposed to be dead at the tree. And when you're serving the Most High, you're entering the law of Yahuwah, which is life and righteousness. Chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua Meshach, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Yahshua Meshach hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Y'all understand now? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. He's talking about the law of 
sin and death now. And the animal sacrifice. Remember the animal sacrificial laws that couldn't remove sin? For what the law could not do that in that it was weak through the flesh. Yah was sending his own son in the light. Well, this is actually really talking about the laws of animal sacrificial laws right here. Let me start over with that in mind. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Yah was sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemning condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So, we know that the animal sacrifices could not wipe away sin and wash away permanently. And it was an earthly light sacrifice, a fleshy sacrifice, until the spiritual sacrifice had come and covered sins once for all, put away sin once for all, conquered death once and for all. Verse 4 again, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the, after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. What are the things of the flesh? I read them in Galatians chapter 5 and in Second Timothy. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. I read some of the fruits of the Spirit as well. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. Wait a minute, did I actually read that? I'm trying to think, did I read the fruits of the Spirit when I read that in Galatians? Oh yeah, y'all know I've still got some memory problems. But, I'm working on that. And anyway, if I didn't, go read it. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. That's when you serve sin and death, the law of sin and death, and all the things pertaining to it. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's when you serve Yahweh, the laws of Yahweh, and serve life and righteousness. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh. This is the reason why the wheat is separating from the tares. There has to be separation. You cannot work it out with the tares. You can't work it out with the unrighteous, the ungodly, the unholy. You can't work it out with unrepentant sinners. You can only work it out with repentant sinners. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh, for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can be. So, and this is why Catholicism, Christianity, did away with the laws at, the, at their cross. At their cross, their Savior did away with the laws. Their Paul explains that they don't have to do nothing that the Father says do. Maybe some of the Ten Commandments, but even them are altered by them. They are not subject to the laws of Yahweh. Neither indeed can they be. This is why we have to bring the gospel out to all of our people scattered in throughout the world. And along the way, some of these Gentiles of the other nations may hear us and learn and change and, and come in with us when we come into the kingdom of Christ. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh, but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Yah dwell in you. Now if any man 
You know, I read, sometimes I read a little off. Let me start over with that one. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that, if so, be that the spirit of Yahweh dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Yahusha, he is none of his. There are many thinking to this day that they are in the true Messiah. Many are thinking they are covered by the blood that the death angel may pass over them. Many are deceived by this God of the Gentiles, of the Europeans, that they brought to the world and even shown his image as a pretty man, just as his description as a pretty man is described in, uh, is it in Isaiah chapter 14, where it talks about the description of Satan being this beautiful angel. They made that image to be their God. And they serve it well. And they brought that same ungodly, unholy image and gospel to the world. We are making this correction. Who are the real saints of the Most High? Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit of him that raised up Yahshua, or Yahusha, from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Yahusha from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to the life, to live after the flesh. We are debtors to live after the flesh. I mean, wait a minute. Man, I'm tripping. Let me start over at 12 again. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. I am at 43 minutes. I'm going to stop right there at Romans chapter 8, verse 13, and I'm going to start Again, and I'm going to read through part, read through chapter 10 and part 3. So thank you for tuning in. I pray you got to understand it so far. Finish this so you can finish getting an understanding. And come right over with me to part 3. Shalom.